Hi, Rypon here, back with another video. And today we're going to talk about password spraying. So what is password spraying? Password spraying is a technique where you take one password that you think someone would use, something like summer 2022 exclamation point, and you run it against every user that you can. Uh, in this case, we're going to run it against every user that's in Active Directory. This is going to allow us to find passwords that are weak, but still fit the credential policy. And this is very common. Uh, almost every pen test I'm a part of, uh, they're doing some form of password spraying, uh, whether that be against a website or to escalate privileges. But today I'm going to show you the way to do it against Active Directory, at least for the standard method. There is a different method for LDAP password spray that I will show in a different video. All right, so let's take a look. We're going to start with our Kali box here, and we're going to stand up a simple Python HTTP server. So we can literally just type in the word Python dash M HTTP server and whatever port we want. And the reason I'm going to do this is I want to serve out my PowerShell script to my victim. I'm assuming that access to GitHub is blocked or access to external is blocked, but I still want to serve my script up internally and I have a foothold on a victim. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start our HTTP server over here, and then we're going to jump over to our victim. Our victim here is a Windows 10 machine, and it's going to be doing the password spraying for us. Now, there are methods to do this direct from Kali, but I thought I'd illustrate the PowerShell way because it also allows me to illustrate PowerShell bypass. So we're going to bypass AMZ. So let's go ahead. We'll start PowerShell. And we're going to do a download cradle. So a download cradle takes a script and runs it, runs it directly into memory. So if I paste in this command, it's going to download the invoke domain password spray script from my Kali box, and it's going to put it right into memory. It doesn't exist on disk. It just exists in memory. So let's go ahead and do that. We're probably going to hit AMSI here. And if we do, we're going to attempt to bypass it. And as you can see, this script contains malicious contact and has been blocked by your antivirus software. Well, this is common. So there are a lot of different ways to bypass Defender or AMZ. I'm going to show uh, just one of the other the methods I use pretty uh, consistently. You can also do invoke obfuscation on your scripts to, to make it to where AMZ won't detect them. But this is a simple way, and it's quick. So if I come over here to amz.fail, HTTPS AMZ.fail. And I generate a payload. I always recommend you generate a new payload. And definitely don't use this stuff at the top because AV vendors have been keying on that. But if you go and you select everything below Rasta Mouse's AMZ scan buffer patch, and we'll see if this works. If it doesn't work, we'll try it again. Just come over here to Hunter. We're in our PowerShell screen. We're going to go ahead and paste this in now. If it will let me try this again, copy and paste, edit, paste, there we go. All right, so let's hope this works. And it did not work. We will try it again. We'll generate another one. I'll try, this time I'll try another one with Rasta Mouse's AMZ buffer patch. Copy this out. Paste it in. Make sure my mouse is in there. Come on. Enter, enter. Nope, didn't work that time either. This happens sometimes. You have to generate several. We'll try a different one here. We'll try unknown force error. And this is always a cat mouse game with Defender. Most of the time you can find one that'll work here fairly quickly. Oh, that one didn't work because of the script showing an error. We'll generate another one from Rasta Mouse. Try another AMD buffer scan patch. And this will eventually work. Sometimes it takes four, five, six tries. Okay. Nope. Blocked by antivirus. Try a couple more.
and that time it worked. So now we have bypassed AMZ. So that's a cat and mouse game. Uh, good thing here is if you are a defender and you're watching Windows Defender, I would have just tripped it at least three or four times, right? Every time that AMZ fail happens, I have tripped Defender. So I've kind of tipped my hand, but I was able to bypass it, which means now you won't see me anymore. I'm now invisible. You'll only see the PowerShell logs that I'm running on this host, which that's a good telltale sign as well. Uh, we can go through that in a different video hunting for that stuff. But in particularly, let's uh, we're going to go clear screen and we're going to now use our script that we could not do before. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the password spray script. And now it worked. We now don't have AMZ in our way. So we bypassed AMZ and uh, we're going to be able to, to, to now spray passwords against this domain. Also, if you look over here on the Kali box, you're going to see that it did download it. We downloaded it the first time and it failed. Now we downloaded it again. So this is a good tip as well to know if your victims are downloading your uh, items that you want to serve up. This is the best way to tell right here once you have this Python server running. You can also put an and sign after this and put it in the background so you can continue to use this command line. It's a, it's a uh, and character. Uh, just put that right after. But let's take a look at our password spray now. So now we simply do invoke password spray. Well, let me just let it tab complete. Invoke password spray. That's domain password spray, excuse me. And then password, we're gonna do summer 2022 exclamation point. Now I've noticed this pattern of people using uh, the season and year because a lot of organizations have a 90 day password reset policy. So that takes them through a season every time they reset it. So they'll just do spring, summer, fall, winter, and then they'll do the year and then some arbitrary character exclamation point one, something like that. And it fits the credential policy, but is still a weak password. And if you want to block this, you need something like uh, Azure Password Protection or using a PassFilt DLL on your domain controllers to block a list of known bad passwords. Well, let's go ahead and run our spray. And here we go. It says it's created a user list containing 522 users gathered from the domain and it's setting a weight between sprays. Now this script has a few errors in it. It's not running on this particular version of PowerShell very well, but it does work. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll do yes. And it's spraying. And we have a success. User William, Melissa William here, uh, has summer 2022. So we just escalated. So now we have her account. That's another account we can put into our account database and use it against our adversary, which in, if you're the red team, the adversary is the blue team. But from a blue team perspective now, how do we detect this? And how do we find this user that was successfully compromised? Well, we can do that in a single rule in our Elastic Sim. So let's go ahead, we'll hop over to our Elastic Sim now. And very simply, we're gonna look for event code 4625. And this is failed login attempt. If we look here, we're gonna see every failed login attempt. Now, in a normal domain, this is gonna be a fairly busy log. You're gonna see a lot of 4625s. 4625, just simple failure. But what you can see here is on this graph, look at how many in a very short period of time we had here, right? We've had a lot. That's abnormal. So that leads us to creating a rule that's based on thresholds. And this is a perfect usage for SIM. This is one of the places where SIM really shines is creating threshold-based rules. So if we come over here, I've pre-created a rule, but I'll show you what it looks like. I'll go into security overview. And we'll go into rules. And it's a new version of Elastic, so I've got a few errors over here on the right. But I have possible password spraying as a rule. I have it as set as a 75, um, 76 on the risk score. And we're using our index pattern from WinLogB. But let's take a look at the rule settings. So I've selected a threshold rule, right? I'm looking for a threshold. 
And what I want to see is any time that we see more than 50 failures in a minute. If I see 50 failures in one minute, I know a human can't fail a password that many times. Now you have to adjust the threshold for your environment. Most of the time, 100, anywhere, you know, take your user count and make something that makes sense. Like if you have 5,000 users, 200 users is a good number. Right. Just take a number that makes sense in your environment, something you're not going to trip all the time. Look through your thresholds and make sure they make sense and then build a rule like this. So we are looking for the index pattern of winlog B. We have a threshold rule. We have event code 4625. And then we're looking for winlog event data workstation name is our group by. This means that it's only going to fire when it comes from a single place. Right. Windows sees the place that it's coming from first. Right, that's what our workstation name is. So we're looking for a threshold a greater than one here. So one workstation doing this behavior. Then we're looking for a count of when log event data target username greater than 50 unique values. That means they attempted 50 different usernames. So attempting 50 different usernames, very abnormal. A user's not gonna do that in a normal circumstance. They're gonna attempt their own username over and over and over again. So if you use that logic, that means that one workstation attempted 50 usernames in a period of time, a short period of time. And in the case of, of this rule, I have it set, I think, at five minutes. Uh, so we'll take a look at our quick query preview. And we can see in the last hour, this definitely would have fired four times because I've run the attack four times. Uh, but this is how you would build the rule. And then you would just save your changes down here. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. We should have a rule that has fired since we did our attack. We'll go over here to alerts. And we have possible password spraying. So if we select view details over here, we can see it came from our hunter station, just like we, where we ran the attack from. So the blue team, this is how you would catch this. And this caught our hunter station. So at minimum, I need to go investigate what's going on with the station, right? But if I really do believe this is password spraying, I can find out whether they were successful with their password spray from this rule. So if we go investigate in timeline now, this is going to take us to our timeline view. So during the period of time that this rule fired, what happened? I'm going to go update and recreate data view just to get into the modified new view. And I'm going to add a field here. And what I want now is event.code. 4624, which is successful login. So during the period of time where I had this weird password spray, did I have a successful login? If I did, it behooves me to go reset that user's password to prevent the attacker from being able to use this against me. So I will go save here and notice I have three of these and I can see where the account was successful. Now notice this is my domain controller. So this is the one I'm interested in. Right. Password sprays typically will log on the domain controller as its source, not on a file server. I mean, they could, but most of the time it's going to be on the domain controller. So if we take a look here, we'll go ahead and expand the view details over here. And if we look for the target username, target username, we can see it is Melissa William. That was our compromised account. So we have now detected a password spray and found the successful logins during that time period. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you. Please like and subscribe. And if you like these videos, uh, you know, give it a thumbs up, comment, anything you want to do. Thank you very much.